Donald Trump will wind down the White House Coronavirus Task Force within the month, even as the nation's death toll is predicted to double by August. The US President insists it's time to reopen, opting to forego a mask as he toured a mask factory. Out of the White House and savouring that post-lockdown freedom, the President almost forgot the rules as he greeted the Governor of Arizona, a battleground state in November's presidential election. And there was a campaign feel at today's visit to an aerospace company now producing face masks, which Mr Trump chose not to wear. And playing loud and clear, live and let die. Our country is now in the next stage of the battle. It's a reopening of our country. Who would have ever thought we were going to be saying that? A reopening, reopening. Three people have been charged in the fatal shooting of a store security guard. Police say the victim was killed for enforcing a state-mandated face mask policy. A family dollar store in Flint, Michigan, became a murder scene on Friday. Police believe a security guard, 43-year-old Calvin Munnerlin, was fatally shot in the head after he told shopper Charmel Teague that her daughter had to wear a mask before entering the store. The daughter did not have a mask. Uh, Charmel did have a mask, but the altercation ensued uh, and we believe she, she communicated with Larry, uh, Larry Teague and uh, Ramon Bishop and they returned to the store and the uh, shooting occurred. Why were Johannesburg Emergency Services personnel paid less than half their salaries last month? Authorities don't seem to be willing to answer that question. Some firefighters who also operate ambulances say they don't have enough money to get to work. They are called first responders because they are expected to be the first on the scene of an emergency. It could range from a fire to a medical problem. Health workers are being hailed for their hard work during the coronavirus outbreak. But emergency service workers in Johannesburg say they can't afford to go to work or pay their bills because they haven't been given their full April salaries. Nibis Jemve is appealing his 15-year prison sentence. He was convicted of sexual violence in 2017 and his hearing in Chigali has been delayed for nearly two months due to Rwanda's coronavirus lockdown. Nibisi was defending himself and succeeded in getting his sentence reduced to seven years. Lawyers say it's important to keep the wheels of justice turning. But not everyone has access to remote court hearings. The judiciary says that only eight out of 64 courts in the country are able to offer video conferencing and trials online. They are dealing with urgent criminal cases to try and ease overcrowding in prisons during the lockdown. A five-year-old was caught driving. Yep, troopers say that's a five-year-old behind the wheel of his parents' SUV. How old are you? You're five years old. The boy was stopped along a freeway in Utah after driving for a few miles. Where did you learn how to drive a car? 
The kid even knew to pull off to the side of the road for the trooper. The trooper initially thought the SUV was being driven by an impaired driver who needed medical attention. But when he walked over to the driver's front window, what a shock. The young man was there. He was sitting on the front edge of the seat so that he could reach the brake pedal to keep the car stopped while I was standing there. And I helped him get the car into park. The boy was headed to California to buy a Lamborghini after he said his mom wouldn't buy him one, troopers say. You just sit right there for a second, okay? The child had three bucks on him, they add. No charges have been filed. The incident remains under investigation. Six people were killed last October when a steel bridge in Yilan County came crashing down as a tanker was driving across. The Taiwan Transportation Safety Board said on Tuesday that the bridge had been long overdue for a safety inspection. By law, the bridge needed to pass inspection every two years. But because of a conflict of jurisdiction between the local government and the region's port authority, no one performed assessments on the bridge after 2016. Last October, Nanfang Ao Bridge collapsed, killing six and injuring 13. After a seven-month probe, the Taiwan Transportation Safety Board released its preliminary findings. The sections without steel cables were not compensated for. When they're not centered properly, laws of physics indicate that you might have an uneven distribution of force. Now, are Zimbabwean troops fighting in Mozambique? The Southern African country says no, debunking reports that it has deployed its military in neighboring Mozambique to fight an Islamic State insurgency there. According to Zimbabwe's Information Permanent Secretary, Nick Mangwana, there are no boots on the ground in Mozambique, and there is, in fact, no plan for this. So where did the news come from, and why did it spread almost like wildfire? We give you a quick background to the story between the two neighboring countries. Last week, Zimbabwe's leader, Emerson Minangagwa, was on a one-day trip to Mozambique to meet President Felipe Nyusi. A communique released after the meeting acknowledged that instability in Mozambique was on the agenda. For 31 million francs for the Pate Grandmaster Chime. Ladies and gentlemen, once in a lifetime, only at Christie's. Total.